Yo, welcome back. This is Stu42 with another Minecraft video. Now, I was going to try and make an episode today about maybe getting into some applied energistics. Uh, I figured it's maybe time to get into it. I'm really... this is starting to annoy me a little bit. Uh, but one of the things I've just realized about applied energistics is... When we get into the detail of the ME controller, yep, we can make a few of these things pretty easily. But the quantum core, we do have our nether stars now, that's great. Uh, enrich scenarium, cool. Enrich scenarium, yeah, bit of work we're gonna do, but we've got all the bits and pieces pretty much for that. But the scenarium alloy. Oh, we're gonna need eight iridium reinforced plates, each one of those needing four of the industrial craft iridium ore. Now, one of the things with the industrial craft iridium ore is you can get it rarely in a chest, or you can make it out of MOX nuclear fuel and pellets of RTG fuel. That only gives you one of them for 80 million RF. It's going to be a bit of a long road. So what I'm thinking of doing is we're going to need a bunch of this. So this is sort of the introductory episode to the long path that's going to be uh, getting this iridium ore. So one of the things that we want to do is get some nuclear stuff going. So we're going to need ourselves a nuclear reactor. Uh, dense lead plate, reactor chamber, bunch of lead, bunch of lead. Yep, nothing too tricky there. Standard generator, cool. So we're just going to build a, a basic nuclear reactor. Uh, we can use the immersive engineering cables, hopefully to wire the power out of here, convert it to RF. And we may just run... Actually, what I might do is we'll get this set up and we'll put nuclear feeding this, but feeding this when it's above... I don't know, maybe change that to 80% for the uh, for the nuclear fuel and then below 50% using the generator just so that we can use up our nuclear fuel a bit faster uh, to give us the plutonium that we need to make the RTG and in turn the, um, the MOX nuclear fuel as well. So, bit of a process. I'm not going to get all of this done in one episode. We'll do this episode probably just about getting the nuclear up and running and plugging that in. Uh, and we'll leave the rest for future episodes. But this is probably, getting a flight logistics is going to be a good, well, two or three, maybe even four episodes. So, without further ado, let's get cracking. I will once again do my disappearing act, run away and make ourselves some parts for the nuclear reactor and see what we can do about getting it plugged in down the bottom and getting a basic sort of setup running for that. Uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we have made a few of the things that we're going to need, uh, not quite all of them just yet. As you can see though, I am wearing the scuba helmet, hazmat suit, leggings and the rubber boots. That is because I have shoved some of the uranium ore into the macerator and then into my ore washing plant. We're just doing it manually at the moment. And as you can hear from the generator clicking on and off, here we have the purified crushed uranium ore in the thermal centrifuge and it is making us quite a bit of uranium actually tiny piles as well awesome so that's what we're going to need to do to make the fuel rods so we need enriched uranium nuclear fuel which is why we need the tiny piles of 235 the big piles of 238 and then we need a canning machine with an empty fuel rod so we need to make some of those as well i still need to get the canning machine a uh, bit sorted but for now that is a pretty good start now the other thing that i've done which i thought i'd just quickly pop back and show you is down here wahoo now, this is what I've decided to do for the nuclear room. Uh, this is not reinforced at all. It just kind of looks pretty at the moment. Um, so I've used some of the lab blocks, you know, put some extra decorations around, um, some bit of lighting. In here, we've got a similar sort of thing, some lights, and we have our nuclear reactor sitting here in the middle uh, with the glass cable running up um, to the top floor. So one of the things I've always tried to do is keep a main sort of power distribution board. So this is what we're using for our main distribution board at the moment. Uh, we've got power going in there from the generator. As you can see, it's clicking on and off and on and off. Um, in through here, we've got power coming in from up the top. And then we've got power coming up to here to this MFE from the nuclear reactor down the bottom. I've also got it set to output into here. I'm not sure if this will work yet. We'll see this in action soon, as soon as we get some fuel rods in there. But we need to make a few more components for the reactor before we can put some fuel in there. So I just thought I'd come back and show you some of the progress. Um, I'll be back again in just a moment once we've got uh, probably the canning machine and we'll have some fuel rods to actually put in there and make sure that we can get this turning on and off 
uh, and maybe some control running back down to the nuclear reactor and then that'll probably be it for this episode um, and then we'll move on uh, further in that build in future episodes so see you in just a moment with the rest of this build okie dokie another bit of time has gone by uh, let's just put my my horrible uh, orange suit on uh, we have this extra canning machine here and we've made ourselves 12 uranium fuel rods which we can now pick up because we're in our suit we have 30 enriched uranium nuclear fuel fuel left uh, and also a bit of um quite a bit of 238 left over a couple of tiny piles of 235 um, so it looks like we're going to end up with way more of that and this was all from a single stack um, of crushed ore so 32 uranium ore which was pretty good pretty good so um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the six iron plates because I really want to make the dual rods so we have six dual rods uh, I've done a tiny bit more work down here as well uh, just made it a bit more pretty decided to put some carpenters blocks in on the corners uh, I reckon it looks pretty funky now yeah uh, also got the redstone conduit heading up to the top as well as an emergency cutoff switch uh, so this is pretty much So there we go, output 180. Now, okay, so on means on and off means off. So it's not a cutoff switch, it's a cut on switch. Awesome, so that's zero EU per tick. This here is off. We need to turn it on to be on. Now that redstone that goes up to here, I've since made this RF monitor. So this RF monitor, we can now, uh, let's, let's change this one down to something like 60%, which means that this generator will only turn on when this gets uh, below 60. This one here, we want to have the alarm level, uh, we want redstone signal being sent when the alarm is, what do we want? We want it to be on when it's less, because it's the opposite. So whenever this thing goes below, whenever it goes below 80%, send out a signal which should turn that thing on underneath now you might have noticed it's not on that's because we're using this uh, redstone conduit from ender io and it doesn't connect by default so we have to just aim in there give it a quick tap with our wrench and you'll see that's now on and this is now kind of growing and this is fantastic cool so you can actually output using the immersive engineering wire and convert back from EU straight to RF as well, which is really, really handy. So this MFE is pretty much never going to get full. Uh, this thing here should reach. Yeah, that's cool. So let's just for demo's sake, put this down to like 73%. Uh, and this should stop sometime pretty shortly, actually, because it was only 70% before. So once that reaches 73%, it should shut off this redstone signal, which will turn the reactor off down the bottom and save us a bit of fuel. And this will just stop, uh, which means this will never get full. So um, but that's fine. I mean, I'm only using this MFE to convert it. I could potentially use an MFSU, but I mean, MFE outputs 512 EU per tick. The reactor downstairs is never going to output more than 512. I'm never going to make it a massive reactor. I mean, at most, we could probably get it up to 360 or something. Um, that's still running. So you notice that when I was down here, I chose... I mean, I've been, I've been busy making all these bits, <laughs> but I, I, I chose this reactor layout because it's just a stable reactor. So we get 180 EU per tick out of this. I can duplicate the same thing over here in this section and have another 180. That's 360 EU per tick, which is a pretty good, oh, there we go, it's just turned itself off. So 360 EU per tick is pretty good for a completely stable reactor. I don't have a reinforced room. I don't really want to fool around with degrading components or anything like that. So this is just a fairly, well, it's just a fairly easy setup. I don't really care too much about efficiency either. Um, one of the main reasons I'm using nuclear in the first place is not really for the power. It's actually to deplete the uranium so that I can get the plutonium out of it because I need the plutonium to make some other things in the future. Um, so yeah, that's the emergency. In fact, we don't have an emergency cutoff switch that won't, that won't work. Cool. So that's pretty much it, I think, for this build. That's, you know, we've got plenty of uranium left up in that canning machine, so we can always make more of these, as long as we remember to put on, put on our little gimp suit. <laughs> um, 
so that we don't die from radiation poisoning. Uh, but that's that's a pretty solid pretty solid build. Um, let's just up this though. Maybe we'll go all the way to 90% with this one. So I really want to prefer nuclear power to um, the diesel generator at this point, just because I do want that plutonium out of it. So this is now going to keep racing away until it gets to 90%, which means it'll stop when it gets to 90. When it gets below 90, it'll kick in the uh, nuclear reactor down the bottom. And then when it gets below 60%, the diesel generator will also kick in to give it a bit of a helping hand. That's if we're under sort of heavy load. Now we have upgraded our version of uh, Infinity. We've gone to 2.2.2 as of this recording, and they've changed a bunch of things with immersive engineering. So this generator is being nerfed a bit. It's no longer 4,000 RF per tick. It's now 1,024. Well, not 4,096 has gone down to 1,024. Uh, also, the excavator that we built in the previous episode seems to take a little bit more power and chew through the ore a bit faster. So I... Oof. And we're out of that, so I need to go and fix up something upstairs as well. So um, on that note, I will be fixing that up, and that's it for this build. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.